Hello students, welcome you all back in our second session of this company accounts. Previous video, we have discussed the main features of company. In the previous video of this uh, advanced accounting subject, uh, unit number three, company accounts, we have discussed the meaning of the term joint stock company. We have discussed about the features of joint stock company. The features like it's a voluntary association, then separate legal existence, perpetual existence, limited liability, and uh, transferability of shares, common seal, separation of ownership and management, number of members, and formation and uh, liquidation. So different features of joint stock company we have discussed. Secondly, we have studied about the different types of companies. We have so many types of companies like company limited by shares, company limited by guarantee, unlimited companies, foreign company, government company, public company, private company, listed company, small company. All these different types of companies we have discussed. Then the next topic we have discussed in the previous class was the classes of shares. Classes of shares. The Companies Act has uh, uh, specified two types of shares which a company can issue that is preference shares and equity shares. So preference shares are those shares which carry a preferential right to get a fixed rate of dividend before any dividend is paid to equity shareholders. Similarly second right the preferential shareholders will have a preferential right to get, to get back the capital before returning any capital to equity shareholders at the time of winding up of the company. So these two are the preferential rights which makes it as preferentials. Now equity shares are those shares on which the rate of dividend is not fixed. The dividend will be paid only after making the payment of dividend to equity shareholders. Similarly. The equity shares are those shares where at the time of winding up the capital will be returned only after repaying back the capital of preference shareholders. So these are the two classes of shares we have discussed up to this point we have discussed in the previous session. Now in this session we are going to discuss the topics of first types of preference shares. Four topics we have discussed in the previous session. So fifth topic we are going to discuss now types of preference shares. There are different types of preference shares which can be issued by joint stock company. We broadly classify into four types like cumulative and non-cumulative preference shares. Actually the dividend will depend on the profitability of the company, the profits earned by the company. If in a particular year there is not sufficient profit available to pay the dividend. Then in that case, if the shares are cumulative preference shares, the dividend will accumulate, it will become arrear of dividend and in the coming years, the shareholders will get not only current years dividend but also the arrears of dividend of the past years. That is called cumulative preference shares. Cumulative preference shares. And in the coming year, if there are any arrears of cumulative preference shares, cumulative dividend, then uh, arrears of uh, arrears of preference dividend then the company before making any dividend to equity shareholders the company must pay arrears of preference dividend arrears of preference dividend must be paid and if the articles of association is silent then at the time of winding up no arrears of preference dividend should be paid but if the articles provides if there is a provision in the articles then at the time of winding up, arrears of preference dividend will be paid. These are called cumulative preferences. The preference dividend will accumulate. Then the second type of preference is non-cumulative, where in a particular year, if there is insufficient profits, the dividend is not paid to preference shareholders, then that year's dividend will lapse. That will not accumulate, that will not be payable in the future. First case over cumulative and non-cumulative. Second, participating and non-participating preference shares. The participating preference shares will carry a right which says that after paying a specified dividend to equity and preference shares, 
the left over profit the participating preference share will have a right to get some profit from the surplus from the surplus example if the shares are participating preference shares then according to this if there is any surplus left after making the payment of equity dividend and preference dividend in that surplus participating preference share will also have the right to get some amount of surplus that is called participating it should be specified at the time of issue of preference share itself it will be specified whether it is participating or not participating if the uh, articles of association is silent then we treat that the preference shares are non participating that means the preference shareholders will not have any right on the surplus after making the payment to equity and preference dividend so these are called participating and non participating preference shares now we'll discuss about convertible and non convertible preference shares name itself is clear convertible preference shares are those preference shares which can be converted into equity shares after specified period of time at the time of issue of preference shares the company will declare that these are cumul uh, these are convertible preference share which can be converted into equity share after a period of 5 years example example after a period of 5 years so if a person has purchased convertible preference shares he is having a right to convert it into equity shares after a period of 5 years these are called convertible non convertible preference shares are those preference shares which cannot be converted into equity share throughout its life these are convertible non convertible now redeemable and irredeemable preference shares redeemable preference share means the preference shares which will be taken back or redeemed by a company after specific period of time which are declared at the time of issue of preference shares at the time of issuing preference share the company has declared that these shares will be redeemed after a period of 10 years so the life of the preference share is 10 years at the end of 10 year the end of the 10th year the preference shareholders have to return back the preference share to the company the company will redeem these are called redeemable irredeemable preference share means the company will not take back but according to the provisions of companies act 2013 no company in india can issue irredeemable preference shares or those redeemable preference shares where the redemption period is more than 20 years to present law ke hisab se only redeemable preference shares only can be issued irredeemable cannot be issued ha huh? if it is redeemable after 20 years also it is not allowed below 20 years it is allowed these are called redeemable so this is the these are the main types of preference shares <coughs> now we'll come to difference between preference share and equity share so before learning prefer difference between preference share and equity share first of all definition we already know preference share is that share which carries a preferential right to get a fixed rate of dividend before any dividend is paid to equity shareholders and the second right is the preference shareholders will have the preferential right to get back their capital before the return of capital to equity shareholders at the time of liquidation this is preference and equity shareholders equity shares are those shares which does not carry a fixed rate of dividend every year the rate of dividend will fluctuate they will get the dividend only after any amount is left after paying the preference dividend similarly at the time of liquidation they will get back their capital only after returning the capital to preference shareholders this is the meaning now differences there are many differences between preference shares and equity shares first of all preference share, preference shareholders will have a right to get dividend first before declaring any dividend to equity and equity shareholders will have the right to get only after paying the preference shareholders secondly at the time of liquidation also preference shareholders will have the right to get back their capital before returning to equity and for equity shareholders they will get in the last after paying to all claims including after paying to preference shareholders next is the rate of dividend on preference shares the rate of dividend of preference shares is fixed 
at the time of issue itself the company will declare that these preference shares will carry a dividend of so and so percentage whereas equity shareholders the dividend rate will fluctuate will not be fixed next one in case of preference shares arrears of dividend will accumulate there are cumulative preference shares the arrears of dividend will accumulate and it will, it will be payable in future koi saal agar dividend nahi pay kare ya kam dividend pay kare to usko accumulate hoga usko arrears hoga aur future years mein usko mila kar pay karenge but there is no cumulative equity shares agar koi year mein equity dividend nahi pay kare to wo year laps that's it that will not get accumulated next to preference shares uh, do, not, do not have any voting rights until and unless their rights are affected the preference shareholders will not have ordinarily any voting rights in the meeting of the company whereas equity shareholders will have the voting rights now redeemable preferences preferences may be redeemable or irredeemable but there is no question of redeemable equity shares the equity shares are always irredeemable so we have discussed about the differences between preference shares and equity shares now we discuss the next topic called presentation of information relating to share capital in the balance sheet of a company so according to companies act 2013 the format of the balance sheet has given the i mean the description how the capital should be disclosed in the balance sheet balance sheet mein capital kis tarah show karna that has been given in the prescribed format of balance sheet given by companies act now how it should be shown in the new format authorized or nominal or uh, registered capital first we have first it is required to be disclosed in the balance sheet the authorized or nominal or registered capital what is this authorized it is the maximum capital which a company can raise and this registered capital authorized capital nominal capital will be specified in the memorandum of association at the time of formation of the company the company has prepared memorandum of association in that memorandum of association the company has uh, written the capital clause in capital clause it has specified the capital of the company will be so and so for example 10 crore so in the capital clause of memorandum it has specified 10 crore this is the maximum limit of capital which this company will have the company cannot issue more share more share capital than this fixed capital this registered capital authorized capital ha huh? if in future the company wants to expand the company wants further capital they have to alter the capital clause alter the capital clause change the capital clause and re modify the memorandum then again they can increase but presently without modification company has the company can issue the share capital only to the extent of authorized so authorized capital should be specified in the balance sheet second issued capital issued capital is that part of authorized capital which is actually issued by the company to the public example the company has an authorized capital of 10 lakh shares 10 lakh shares the company is having maximum out of 10 lakh the company has issued only 6 lakh shares to the public the company does not want the complete uh, funds now the company requires only 6 lakh shares fund so out of 10 lakh the company is having the share capital the company is issuing only 6 lakh shares this is the issued capital subscribed capital is that part of issued capital which is actually purchased actually subscribed by the public example the company has issued 6 lakh shares it is not compulsory that all the shares will be purchased by the public the public have subscribed only 5 lakh shares public ke paas se jo response aaya public jo khareedi hai apply kari hai wo only 5 lakh shares this is called subscribed capital then called up capital the called up capital is that part of subscribed capital which has already been called by the company example the shares the face value of each share is 100 rupees but the company has called up only 60 rupees at present remaining 40 rupees the company will call later it will call later but at present it is calling only 60 rupees per share this is called called up capital last one paid up capital is that 
part of capital, that part of called up capital which has actually been paid by the shareholders. Example, the company has called up 80 rupees per share on 1 lakh shares. 80 rupees per share on 1 lakh shares. So 1 lakh into 80, 80 lakh rupees the company has to receive. But out of 80 lakh, the company has received only 75 lakhs. 5 lakh rupees are calls in a year. So company call kari 80 lakh rupees. But public nahi pay kari, koi public default kar diye, calls nahi pay kari time par. So company has received only 75 lakh. This 75 lakh rupees is called paid up capital. So this is the classification of capital to be disclosed in the balance sheet of the company. Authorized capital, issued capital, subscribed capital, called up capital, paid up capital. Now we'll discuss about the issue of shares journal entries. The first topic in this is issue of shares. A company accounts care topic, mein, first of all, we are going to do the problem on journal entries on the issue of shares. When the company has issued shares, what are the journal entries to be passed? Now we are going to discuss. The first journal entry for receiving application money. When the company issues the shares, the public will subscribe. So when the public subscribe, they have to pay the application money. And one point I want to make it clear that the company will not, uh, I mean, call the face value of the um, uh, face value of the share in one lump sum. If a share of 100 the company will not 100 rupees at the time of application itself. Balki usko installment pe call the company will call the face value of a share in installment, not in one lump sum amount. 100 rupees ka share hai, to company ye kahiti hai ke first of all you have to pay 20 rupees on uh, application. When the, sub, when the shareholders apply, they have to pay only 20 rupees per share out of 100. So that application money will be received 20 rupees per share from the shareholders. Then after that, the company will make the allotment. Application aage, application money aage. Now the company will take the decision how to allot the shares to the shareholders. Shares ko, shares ko kaisa allot karenge, uska procedure. Then by following that procedure, the company will make the allotment. Jaisi allotment ho gaya, they will uh, ask the shareholders applied, the shareholders who have applied for shares, the company will ask the shareholders to pay allotment money. Example, 30 rupees. So 100 rupees ke share mein, 20 rupees the shareholders have paid at the time of application. And the company has asked the shareholders to pay 30 rupees at the time of allotment. Now out of 100 rupees, 50 rupees the shareholder has paid. 20 rupees he has paid on application, 30 rupees he has paid on allotment. Still 50 rupees are due. Now, after a period of time, whenever the company requires, whenever a company requires, the company will ask to pay a call money. The company will ask to pay call money to the shareholders. Example, like six months ke baad, eight months ke baad, company ko or fund ki zarat padi, the company has written the letter to the, given the message to the shareholders that pay first call money of rupees 30 30 rupees per share first call money pay karo ek share ke upar 30 rupees pay kar do to already the shareholder has paid 20 on application 30 on allotment 50 rupees already paid now the company is asking to pay 30 rupees more the shareholders have to pay 30 rupees per share kitna ho gaya 50 plus 30 80 rupees the company has called up the company has called up Abhi ek chhe mahine, aad mahine, saal, do saal ke baad company ko aur paise ye zor padegi. The company will call. The company will again call the shareholders. The company will again call the shareholders to pay the final call, second and final call of 20 rupees. A second call. Shareholders have to pay 20 rupees per call, <coughs> per share, as final call. Ab ek baad 20 rupees pay kar diye, to 100 rupees ho gaye. Now there is no amount due from the shareholder to the company. Now company call nahi kar sakti. 100 rupees call karna tha, company 100 rupees call kar di. How the company has made the call? 20 rupees the company has made on application. The company has called 20 rupees on application. 30 rupees on allotment. 30 rupees on first call. And lastly 20 rupees on second and final call. 
that's it. So how to pass the general entries for this application, allotment, first call, final call? Here, for receiving application money, first entry. When the application money is received, bank account data to share application account. The money is received by the company, so bank account is debited. This money is received for share application. Share application, new account is opened, being the application money received. For transferring the application money to share capital. After receiving the application money, this application money should be transferred to share capital. The entry will be share application account data to share capital. So first entry, bank account data to share application. Share application account is created. Second entry, this share application money will be transferred to share capital. So share application account data to share capital. By passing this entry, share application account will get closed. First entry we have credited share application, second entry we have debited share application. So share application account is closed. Now third entry for the amount due on allotment. Allotment ka paisa due hai. So country share allotment account data to share capital. Share allotment account data to share capital. This is the entry for allotment money due. Now allotment money received. Allotment money paisa agya. Bank account data to share allotment account. So here third entry share allotment account was debited. Here share allotment account is credited. So share allotment account will get closed. So two entries for application. First application money received. Second application money transferred. Third entry allotment money due. Next allotment money received. Four entries are over. Now first call. For the amount due for first call. Share first call account data to share capital. This is the call money due. Then call money received. For receipt of first call money, bank account data to share first call account. Bank account data to share first call account. So six entries. Two entries for application. Two entries for allotment. Two entries for first call. If second call, then again same procedure as first call. Just a first call ke due entry thi. share first call account data to share uh, capital. Usidra share second call account data to share capital. Share second call account data to share capital. Share third call account data to share capital. Like this it goes on. So what do you observe from this? In the first case, application money received entry first, then due entry next. But in other cases, due entry first and receipt entry next. Like this. If in the problem it is asking you cash book and journal entries, so no need to uh, pass the journal entry in which there is a bank account. If in the problem you have cash book and journal entries, both of them are so cash book ke entries, jo rahenge, bank ke jo entries, rahenge, uska journal entry pass nahi karenge. Example, first entry, bank account data to application. This journal entry we will not pass. This journal entry we will directly post it into the cash book. Second entry will pass the entry because there is no bank. Third entry there is no bank. Fourth entry there is bank. Bank account data to share capital. So again this entry will be directly posted in the cash book. No entry will be passed. No entry will be passed. Next step for, for the amount due towards first call. First call money. So this entry will be passed because there is no bank. Here there is a bank account. Like this all entries are passed. Now we'll come to the next topic called calls in area. Next topic is calls in area. It refers to that part of share capital of the company which has been called by the company but the shareholder has not paid till the last date fixed by the company. So calls in area ka matlab ye hai ke company call kari hai. The company has made a call to the shareholder but the shareholder has failed to pay pay the call money the or allotment money that is called calls in arrear so entry general entry for calls in arrear will be calls in arrear account data to share allotment and share to share call to share call account when the call money is received bank account data to calls in arrear these are the entries to be passed suppose at the time of making the balance sheet if the calls in arrear account is still there so the calls in area would be deducted from the paid up capital, paid up capital of the company. Suppose interest. Suppose if there is a provision in the articles in the articles of association regarding interest to be charged on calls in area. 
then the company will charge interest on call scenario. Suppose if the company has adopted table F of the provisions of Companies Act, then it can charge interest at 10% per annum from the shareholders. This is called call scene area. Now call scene advance. Call scene advance means this arises when there is oversubscription. Oversubscription. A shareholder joy. 10,000 shares ke liye apply kiya. but the company has allotted only 6,000 shares to him he has applied he has given the application money for 10,000 shares but the company has allotted to him only 6,000 shares 6,000 shares company allot kiye to ne excess application jo money 4,000 ka diya hai that excess application money will not be refunded it will be adjusted it, it will be adjusted in future allotment money or call money this is called calls in advance now regarding calls in advance no dividend will be paid on calls in advance now interest on calls in advance there may be some provision in the article of association regarding how much interest to be paid on calls in advance suppose if the company has adopted table f then interest on calls in advance should be paid at the rate of 12 percent per annum now Issue of shares at a premium. Issue of shares at a premium. When the company issues shares at a price which is higher than the face value, higher than the face value of the share, it is called shares issued at a premium. Shares issued at premium. So normally premium money will be charged at the time of allotment money. For example, 100 rupees ka share a company issue kar 120 rupees. So the face value of the share is 100. But the company is issuing at 120 rupees. So extra 20 rupees the company charge kar rahi hai, wo premium. Hai. And normally this premium will be collected at the time of allotment money. So entry at the time of share allotment account data to share capital to share premium. This is the entry. Then uh, share premium account, share premium will be shown under reserves and surplus in the balance sheet. Now how to uh, use this share premium account? So Companies Act has given the provision that how to utilize this share premium. So share premium can be used for paying the bonus shares. This share premium account can be used for declaring bonus, bonus shares to the shareholders or to write off the preliminary expenses. Suppose if the company is having preliminary expenses that can be written off by using this share premium account. Similarly to write off the expenses or discount or commission relating to the issue of shares or debentures. Last one is to provide for premium payable. Agar premium pay karna hai at the time of redemption of preference shares or debentures. Then premium payable on redemption of preference shares or debentures, we can utilize the share premium account. These are the uses of share premium account. Now issue of shares at a discount. The company, if the company issues shares which at a price which is lower than the face value, lower than the face value 100 rupees face value a company is issuing the shares at 80 rupees it is called shares issued at shares issued at discount but according to companies act uh, no company can issue shares at a discount except in case of sweat shares the sweat shares are sweat equity shares are those shares which are issued to employees and directors so shares issued as sweat shares can be issued at discount but other it cannot be issued at a discount now issue of shares for consideration other than cash sometimes a company will purchase a business purchase a business so for the payment for the pay, paying the purchase consideration for that business the company will issue the shares a business hurriedly company our business ko payment karna hai, purchase price pay karna hai to purchase price pay cash mein nahi pay karte balke shares mein pay karte so it is called issue of shares for consideration other than cash so iska entry kya honga? First of all, sundry assets account data to vendor's account. Then vendor's account data to equity share capital to equity share premium. Like this. For promoters for services. Sometimes shares are issued to promoters for their services. In that case, the entry will be goodwill account data to share capital. This is called issue of shares uh, for consideration other than cash. Oversubscription and pro rata allotment. Oversubscription means... When the number of shares applied are more than the number of shares issued for offer. Agar company issue kari 1 lakh shares or public ke paas se application aage 1 lakh 40 thousand shares. It is called oversubscription. It is called oversubscription. The company has issued 1 lakh shares 
but the public has applied for 140,000 shares, it is called oversubscription. And if the shares are oversubscribed, then the company has to make a procedure how to make the allotment.